BS. It doesn't make sense. Maybe we don't have the solution, and that's why we didn't run for office. So the people who run for office should have solution. We can only suggest, we can only you know, be spectators and say, maybe do this. Like somebody said, if you provided affordable transport, you know, keep the subsidy in, you know, by providing affordable transport. Maybe, you know, commercial transport can buy fuel at a cheaper rate. Of course, Nigerians will probably start siphoning it and selling it. I don't know. But have something to cushion it for the people. You can't just come to them and say subsidy is gone. And the person who you paid 40000 last month, how do you expect the person to come to the office? Transport fare has gone up twice, three times. It's not regulated by anybody. So how do you... So these are the questions we're asking the Tinobu supporters who are saying it has to go. It ha we agree. But you should have done something. You can't... I mean, some people went to Abuja to stand on the mandate to celebrate with them. He announced on the, on, on the podium. And for them to come back to Ibadan, to go back to Lagos, transport has gone up three times. They were stranded in Abuja. And on this mandate, they would trek. So you can't just, you know, off the cuff comments are no longer allowed. You are the president. Everything you say have consequences. If Nigeria, and I've seen people compare the price of petrol to neighboring African countries and, you know, world markets, UK, US, and I agree. I mean, subsidy was the only thing Nigerians were benefiting, really. Now it's gone. I don't have a problem with us paying the rate everybody else is paying. What I have a problem with is somebody joining us from Cote d'Ivoire, from Senegal, on this show, and telling us that they have uninterrupted power supply. We don't have that. So the guy in Ivory Coast, the guy in the in the UK, in Canada, don't rely on petrol and diesel to keep his fridge on. Don't rely on petrol and diesel to watch Champions League final. They don't rely on these things as much as we do. Everything we do in Nigeria relies on petrol and diesel. A lot of small businesses will die. And this is a, an economy we're trying to grow. A guy who is doing laundry, he will not go and tell his client, who is a junior guy at the bank, that to iron one shirt is 2000 they got to be like, I'm not ironing, don't worry. I'll wear it wrinkled, like that. So small businesses will suffer. Electricians, um, welder, hairdresser, your tailor. They all use petrol and diesel, which they don't do in the UK. I've seen some mad people on Twitter saying, oh, I, I, I spent 60 whatever dollars to fill my tank in Canada. Are you mad? So when you fill your car, what else do you use petrol for? And you're comparing yourself to people who live in Nigeria who use petrol for everything. My mom told me, she said, I'm no longer buying petrol. We won't cook and put anything in the fridge anymore. The fridge and the freezer are going to become storage cupboards because I'm not going to pay 500 naira per liter to put food in the fridge. We're going to cook every day. I laughed. I said, so to buy food to go to the market every day, how much is it going to cost you? You're still going to end up needing petrol. This is the difference. So for those comparing us to the rest of the world, they are paying world market rates and all of this nonsense. If you give us steady electricity, Nigerians will be able to cope with this new price but we don't. So please stop comparing Nigeria to the rest of the world because they have electricity, we don't. So what if Atinubu can do to give us electricity? I don't know what magic wand he has. We need stable electricity and that will cushion it. Yeah, but, but sure, now we know that we can get that to happen, stable electricity in Nigeria to okay. happen in six months or okay. one year. And we know that right. the government has no money to pay salaries. I'm talking about from August. If they don't okay. get that money from somewhere, what should be done? Okay. That's a question there. First, I know you're not being paid to do this. I tell them what to do. <laughs> but, but just in case. Yeah. Honestly, I, my, my only solution was to give people electricity. And I know it's not realistic. Um, they will probably have to, you know, bring it down to, like what a lot of people are saying, maybe the initial rate they're looking for is like 300. It's like haggling. So they took it to 500. By the time NLC speak to them and they fight and they say there's a strike on Wednesday, they will haggle, haggle, they'll come to 300. Nigeria will say, at least we want more. It's no longer 500. People start paying 300. Suffering and smiling. We are the best at it. Nigeria is a test case to see how much suffering a group of people can take before they revolt. I'm so sure of that. Because the amount of the, the amount of suffering brought to, brought to people... See, when, when, when people complain, they say, hey, you are complaining about everything. It doesn't affect me personally. No, if they sell petrol for 2000 Rudolph, if you have parents in Nigeria, they'll be able to afford it because of you and your siblings. My parents will be able to afford it. So I'm not fighting for my mom or, or anything. But the, 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 the average Nigerian, what, do they, what is the crime of being a Nigerian that is just suffering from one bad news to another? You can't give them electricity. So what can you give them? Subsidize public transport. Do something. You're the president. You, you, you claim you have the solution. I didn't run for office because I don't have the answers. That's why I didn't run. 
if all of us had the answers, we would run for office. So I don't, I, I don't run for office. So let them sit down. And this is part of the problem. If they had like a, you know, a team ready to start speaking on his behalf, probably things would have been better. Things would have been easier. The NLC guy came out of the meeting. He said, the Lelake sat there, was one addressing them. In what capacity? They don't even know. Yes, we know your name, but who are you in this, in this administration? Just some random guy that we see on TV. What's your position? Addressing us as who? Are you speaking on behalf of the president now? Nobody knows. So they need to get their act together and hit the ground running because, I mean, the jury is out. There's opposition. Yes, it might be a bit extreme, but there will be opposition going forward. I don't care if it's PDP in power, if it's Labour Party in power, there will be, there will be people that will be on your neck, like pressing your neck continuously so that Nigerians can be the beneficiaries. Rudolph, so that I don't continue ranting and go and attend to my guests, I don't know what the solution is. But Tinobu and his team, I hope that they can find solution to ease this problem. Nigerians don't deserve this. They do not. The, even some of the people who voted for Tinobu, they're not seeing the Shege Pro Max. Like people said, you know, Nigerians don't deserve this. I hope and pray that they can find a solution to cushion these things for the people. My son is come to get me before he starts making noise. Let me go.